On slide 111, I turn to cross-classified analysis. It's still DSIM, but it's a cross-classified version of DSIM. Cross-classified analysis is very useful for finding trends over time. And we do have some trends in our data here. That's shown, for instance, by the time series plot of the PA and tired averages in the sample in this case. You have PEA up here, jumping up and down a little bit. And you have tired, which shows a fairly um, systematic cycle over the weekdays, at the time of the days. The sample averages, however, have varying precision over time. And the number of people for each of these time points varies for the different time points. So the question is, can we get a time series plot for model estimated values that better use the information in the data and take into account missing data as well? And the answer is yes, by cross-classified analysis. So on slide 113, I give a short summary of the theory for cross-classified analysis. And we're just looking at a one, one single variable. So now we have two between-level cluster variables, person and time. So person is crossed with time. And in this case, we have only one observation for a given person at a given time point. So that's a little bit different than typical cross-classified analysis in multi-level modeling, where you have, say, neighborhoods and schools, and you have several observations within each cross. Here we have just one. It's a generalization of the two-level model that provides more flexibility in the modeling. So uh, therefore, I call this step number five, the last step in your analysis. Random effects can vary across not only persons, but also across time. So the two-level model here with the random intercept can be written as a uh, between person quantity the mean plus variation across that mean, variation across people, and then you have the within person part. The corresponding cross-classified model has the between person, but also between time random effect, and the same within person part. And here the uh, between person alpha sub i and alpha sub t are each normally distributed and each have zero means. Now, it's a more flexible model, and you have a full structural equation modeling possibilities in your model for both the within, for both the uh, within person, between person, and between time parts of the model. Now, the base Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm, however, is more complex, as you can imagine, and is therefore slower. On slide 114, then, you have um, this step 5 cross-classified analysis of PA and tired. And uh, here's where uh, new things come up. You have the t-interval uh, naming of the, analysis of, of the analysis variable time that you give. And that then also plays the role of the second cluster level. You have ID and time. And you use type equals cross-classified, and you may want uh, 2,000 iterations at the very least, and thinning. And if you can, processors equal 12, which makes it a little bit faster than eight processors on my computer. But if you don't have it, you'll be fine with eight. But you probably should get a computer that has at least capability of doing eight. And the model is uh, you do the uh, autoregression for each of the two variables and then we have that lag zero model PA on tired and tired ampersand one as well and then tired on PA ampersand one. That's within. Now the between ID is then PA with tired which means that you have variances for both and a covariance. But then we also have between time and you have PA 
retired variances for both and the covariance across time. And note that we work with factors here in the plot command for future use. So on slide 115 then, <clears throat> I'm comparing the two level and cross-classified estimates and I'm looking at standardized within level estimates. So at the top part of the model, of the output rather, we have the two level results and at the bottom we have the cross-classified results. And we find that they are very similar. There's no real reason that they should be different and they aren't really different here on the within level. Now what about the um, between level estimates? So you have then uh, on the ID level, the ID between or between ID level, two level versus cross classified, two level at the top and cross classified at the bottom. Looks very similar in that case as well. So yeah, no important differences. Uh, on the between ID level either. On slide 117 then I look at the between level estimates for cross-classified analysis alone for the between ID level and for the between time level. So uh, we have then the um, what's of particular interest here are the um, means and sorry the variances rather for PA and tired so this is the, these are the variances across individuals and down here we have the variances across time and we see that the variation across time for PA is rather small and it's uh, if you divide take this divided by 0.738 it's only 0 0.02, very small fraction of the between person variance. For tired, the fraction is a little bit bigger to 65 over 1.550, so 0 0.17, 0 0.17 versus 0 0.02. So we have more across time variation in the tired variable. The uh, covariance between PA and tired also is different and uh, the question is how you interpret that. Uh, that would take a deep substantive dive which I'm not going to attempt right now. Turning to slide 118 then I'm do um, again the um, standardized results for different T interval choices. So you have T interval 1, T interval 2, and T interval 3. And I'm going to focus on the within level, the within level results here. Uh, we notice then that, as before, that the autocorrelation effect uh, decreases as the time interval increases. And that's as expected less correlation across time for the bigger time differences. But what's interesting is that the lag 1 effect here, tired, lag 1 on PA, uh, goes down with increasing T interval. So the time distance is longer, the effect gets smaller, also expected in a, in a sense. And at the same time then, the lag zero effect goes up as the T interval goes up. So the contemporaneous effect becomes more important as the t time interval increases. Now it's not a huge difference here, certainly not between time interval 2 and time interval 3. So once again, we're not that sensitive there's also not that sensitive to the choice of time interval.
Slide 119, then I'll turn to plotting of estimated random effects. And that's what we wanted to do to get a more trustworthy picture of the pattern over time, trends over time, and then we get from the average observed time series plots. So now we, with cross-classified analysis with cluster of ID and time, we have two between levels. And internally in M+, they're referred to as level 2A for time and level 2B for ID. And therefore, the acronym B2A is used for the between level factor score to be plotted. Sorry, between time level factor score to be plotted. So B2, B2A is what we're especially interested in now as the new feature. And the plotting then is using the plot option factors equal and the plot menu option time series plots <coughs> where when you have added factors equal you get a last a setting possibility here, estimated factor score and there you click on B2A uh, for PA and for tired. And out comes this. So this is for the seven days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And now based on estimated factor scores to draw on full information from the, from the model and the data <coughs> for PA and for tired. And we see then particularly how tired is, tiredness is low in the middle of the day and increases at the end of the day low increasing, low increasing, clear cyclical pattern. And it looks like um, we have the sort of the opposite for PA, where um, a low tiredness seemed to be um, maybe followed by a high PA, positive affect. Low tiredness followed by high positive affect. So we have something going on here in terms of a, a trend. It's not a linear trend of increase or decrease over time. I've seen that too. And it actually in the um, short course video from uh, the first day, topic uh, uh, 12, I believe it is, uh, I have an example where there's a sharp trend, downward trend for, I think it was uh, positive affect. The question then is, how do you model these trends and cycles? Well, that's a long story, very interesting story, but it's a topic of a future D7 web talk. But for those who can't wait for this future web talk, I gave some statistical background for cycles modeling already in 2017 in the M plus short course topic 13 part 8 where I discuss a heart rate example.